Okay, today we're going to do orthographic projections. Um, in Canvas, you'll see that there's already examples for number one. That one's an easy one because there are no angles or curves. So let's start with number two. For this um, video, I'm going to show you how we're going to do number two. So the first thing we're going to do is look at our different planes. So let's start with the top. What I really recommend that you do this at home using um, some colored pencils. I'm just going to color in the top plane of this object. Okay, and then this little piece down here. Those are all top facing planes. Hopefully that makes sense. So um, this is top, right? And then our front is going to be this side. This is the front. So Let's color in anything that's a front plane. That's this one, that's this one. And these guys that are at an angle, we can see them from the front. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna color them in too. Okay, now we have the side. From our side, it's gonna be this way. So I'm gonna color in all of the shapes that I can see from the side. So that means that shape there. And then this, this one that's at an angle, that we said we could see it from the front, we can see it from the side too. Okay, now we're ready to actually draw. So orthographic projections, I know that it sounds complicated, but it's really not. Um, it's pretty simple. So um, let's just go ahead and just fold this over so everything is gonna fit in our video. Here we go. I'm gonna start with my top view and I'm gonna use my um, T-square and triangle so I can get nice straight lines. We're not gonna measure anything, we're just gonna draw. Um, we've talked about before that um, developing your sense of scale as a designer is something that you wanna get good at doing, so don't worry about measuring, we're just gonna draw. So first I'm drawing this big um, triangle type shape. Again, not measuring, I'm just, just eyeballing. Looks about like that. And then there's this weird shape right here. Let's go ahead and draw that. Ends up that, that. Okay, so you see we have this is this, and this is this. The only other thing that I can do now is this little piece right here. In order to represent that, I'm gonna make a hidden line, and a hidden line means a dashed line, and that's just to let us know something is going on back there underneath this, underneath this. Um, and you can't see it from the top, but there's some, we're giving some more information. Okay, let's go to the next one. Oh wait, let's go ahead and use our nice architectural lettering, and we're gonna call it top. Top view. All right, now what we're gonna do, okay, here's where it gets cool. This is where the magic of orthographic projections comes in. Each one helps you draw the next drawing. So what we're gonna do is next, we're gonna draw the front. I'm sorry, I didn't continue with my little key. There we go. Front is gonna be pink, side is purple. All right, so we're gonna go to our front. And since we already started drawing our top view, it's gonna help us draw the front view. So what I mean by that is I'm gonna make some kind of light construction lines. I'm gonna take the side and I'm just gonna bring that down lightly. I'm gonna take that center of the triangle and bring it down lightly. And I'm gonna take the end and bring it down lightly. Don't know yet what that means, but we'll get to it in a second. Okay, let's go ahead and draw this side, the pink side. So we already decided the width of our object and we kind of indicated that with our construction line so we can just go ahead and say okay that's how that's how wide it is how thick is this um you know kind of rectilinear horizontal piece of pink i don't know i can just eyeball it it doesn't matter i'm just making this up because we're not going to measure and then um and then there is 
this piece under here, which actually I should have colored that in pink too because this kind of shaded piece you can also see from the front view. So that is gonna be another line. And if I wanna, oh, let's make it, looks like it, they're all kind of the same width. So then this one, like that. So one, two, three. And now we have um, these two weird planes that are at an angle. So we already indicated here, we brought down our, our midline for the middle and we have our two sides. And all we're gonna do is actually close it off on top. I'm just gonna go ahead and heavy up these, these side ones here. So you may think, kind of strange, that the two, um, that these two at, a, at an angle look straight from this position. And that's just the way that, um, projections work. Uh, if you look at some of the handouts that I gave you, it's like there's a big, you know, pane of glass and it's being projected towards it. And we're going to go ahead and again use our architectural lettering and we're going to call this one our front view. There we go. Okay, we're most of the way done. All we have to do now is draw the last view, which is the side view. So again, I'm gonna bring these lines over, um, just kind of some light construction lines. Bring that over, just bring all this information over. And it's gonna help us draw this, this final piece. Let me do that so we can see it a little bit better. Okay, it's really fun that when you get to the final one, we're almost just connecting the dots because we've already decided on a lot of the information. So the next thing we're gonna do, we need a 45 degree triangle for this. Go to the top uh, corner of your object in the front view and we're gonna make a 45 degree line like that. We're gonna bring all of our information from our top view, we're gonna bring it over to our diagonal line and then bring it down. And then all we're gonna to have to do is connect the dots. Sorry, that goes like that. Even our little hidden line, we're gonna, we're gonna use that. Okay, so we're gonna bring these guys over. Okay, let's bring them down. So every time one of those horizontal lines hits the diagonal line, we're just gonna bring it down vertically, like that. And like that. And like that. Okay. And now we have a grid of lines and it looks kind of like, kind of crazy, right? Let's make some sense of it. So we have this shape, this purple shape that's, um, it's almost like a rectangle with a little bite taken out. So all I'm gonna do is just, all I, the information's already here. All I have to do is kind of heavy up my lines. You can see that this is this. And then we said it goes in a little bit like that. And it comes up like that. So all I'm doing is I'm drawing this shape using these guidelines. It's like you're just, just connecting the dots. It's already done for you. There we go. So we got that little shape, this purple shape. Now I just have to deal with this, um, you know, this shape right here that we said we can see it from the side view, even though it's at an angle. So let's let's look what makes sense. So it comes up here. Where which one of these lines is it? Let's look at our top one. It's this one. It comes like this and like this. Okay, that means I'm gonna go like that that and I'm done I'm just gonna use my architectural lettering I'm gonna label it so you can see that um, they're actually pretty fun to do because each drawing helps you draw the next one and 
You know, we use these drawings all the time as designers because they're measurable. So right now this may seem strange because what we're used to seeing in real life is this kind of a view, which is also known as an isometric view or a 3D view. And these, um, you know, orthographic 2Ds, they seem a little weird at first, but we use them all the time because it's something that you can draw and then give to someone um, if you want them to build it. If I wanted somebody to build this, what I would do is give them drawings like this and I would have very specific measurements. You know, this is five feet and this is three feet, et cetera, et cetera, so that I could give it to a cabinet maker or a contractor or someone like that and they would be able to measure and build whatever I design. And that is orthographic projections.